Hello and welcome to Who is Best, a show where I, Lo Claudine, take games that give you choices and rate those choices in a tier list. Now, before we get rolling on this, I want to emphasize how hard it is to rate newer games. When I put together a tier list, I usually start with my experience, then read up on stats, skills, and breakdowns. Then finally, I go to the forums and read what other people have discovered about different party members. As you can imagine, a newer game has less information out there, making it more difficult to go beyond my own knowledge of the game. And this brings us to today's tier list of Trails of Cold Steel 4. I was planning on doing this list much sooner, but needed extra time to get my research done. I love this game. Trails 4 was the perfect end to an excellent series. It also fixed one of my biggest problems with Trails 3, which was the end game teams. In Trails 4, you are not just able to pick from every member of Class 7 for the true final boss, you are able to pick from nearly every playable character across this and other games in the Legend of Heroes series. Because of this, I have broken this list up into two parts. Part 1, this video, will look at every single character outside of Class 7. This is much easier than Part 2 since all of these characters have set equipment, levels, courts, and master courts in the endgame. Things have changed quite a bit since Trails 3. Back then, the break and delay strategy was absolutely broken. Characters like Yuna, Sarah, and Agate completely obliterated enemies. Because of this, other strats like CP damagers, arts users, and evasion tanks, which had been more of the broken strats in previous games, took a slight backseat, but not this time. Physical damage and break damage, as well as brave orders overall, have been nerfed, making this one of the most balanced games in the... <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm not sure where they missed this, but arts are insane. I mean, absolutely broken. So the overall strategy is to support your magic users while they nuke the competition. I played this on hard and not a single boss stood a chance against my art users. Anyways, keep this in mind as we move forward. Viewers, beware, this list does contain spoilers throughout on characters that join your team. They're not going to ruin the story for you, but just know that there are some spoilers. If you'd like to just know the tier list of Class 7, then check out Part 2. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started with the tier of part one. Aeneas has no S-Craft and really no place on your team. She has decent strength with some damage dealing skills but nothing remotely useful when compared to any other party member. Leonidas is slow, incredibly slow. Because of his court setup, his delay is times 1.5 meaning that he'll almost never attack the enemy. Do yourself a favor and just don't use him. The low tier. Xeno comes with a great evasion stat and counter damage, as well as one of the best quartz combinations. Except they're backwards. If he had Sirius as his main quartz and Gugner as his secondary, then we'd have something to talk about. Overall, this guy is squishy and mediocre. Estelle, the hero of Trails in the Sky series, is not treated well in Trails 4. She has high strength and is mostly used to hand out physical damage, but not much else. Inea is a much better choice over her companion Ines, though you still probably shouldn't choose her over other characters. That being said, she has the ability to accelerate and has a brave order that grants 100% evasion, which is pretty good. Celine has a single purpose in your party. She's a BP generator with the awesome skill 9 lives that cures all elements and stat debuffs while also restoring 3 BP. Aside from that, she has no S-Craft, middling stats, and a mediocre brave order. Joshua is a decent evasion tank with an absolutely wasted court setup. I mean, what were they thinking? And that wraps up the low tier. Let's move on to the mid tier. Lloyd's Burning Heart skill is his best aspect. It restores 1 BP, which is pretty good with his tanky build, but his stats leave a lot to be desired. Angelica has decent evasion and an awesome stat boosting skill in Dragon Boost. The best thing about Angelica is her returning Brave Order. Agate is a lesser Randy with a focus towards breaking enemies. If the Brave system hadn't been nerfed, he might have rated higher. His rage ability is incredibly useful with spamming S-Crafts. 
If you are trying to choose between Randy and Agate, Randy barely wins out. His war cry takes less HP and he has incredibly high strength. His quartz setup is also built towards breaking enemies. The final member of the mid-tier is Duvali. The best of the Stallrunner crew, Duvali has great evasion and BP generating skills, along with one of the highest speed stats of this list. To be honest, she could probably place higher on this list. And that ends it for the mid-tier. Buckle up because our top tier is busting at the seams. First, we have the buxom Ellie, who is one of the best healers on this list. Her S-Craft heals all HP, status ailments, and if she's at 200 CP, heals all EP. This is magnificent with how broken casters are. If that wasn't enough, she has high magic evasion and a skill that can accelerate. So yeah, she's pretty dang good. Ren is the mob clearer of the series with almost every skill causing instant death. Her brave order is excellent, accelerating the party while cutting cast time by 50%. The biggest issue with her is that she's not that useful against bosses. Tio's high ATS makes her the second best caster on this list. Her master court setup of Cats and Virgo only stands to magnify this point. Her Brave Order also comes in handy, granting Absolute Reflect and CP plus 40. Tita is the single best support character on this list. Mostly because of her Mobius Master Quartz, which has been consistently the best Master Quartz in the series. She has high strength and defense, as well as the amazing skill Vital Cannon. Tita is a great choice for your endgame team. Arsade's S-Craft is tied with Aurelius as the strongest in the game. He has high strength and evasion with a Brave Order that increases break damage. His quartz setup is great, but as the break system isn't what it used to be, he just didn't quite make it to the god tier. Roselia has the best S-Craft to watch. Boop. <laughs> how can you not like that? <clears throat> anyway, with how much she's built up throughout the game, you would think that she would be an incredible caster, but her stats are disappointing. But I guess none of that matters, seeing as she has one of the best skills in the game. Blood Fang is awesome. It attacks while simultaneously healing your team's HP and CP. Also, she is equipped with the Grail Locket, blocking any status ailments. Uh, she's also the mother of Emma, so, <laughs> duh. Toval is insanely mediocre. He really isn't good at all. His only usefulness is to support your casters. Toval's Brave Order, Spiral Arts, grants no cast time and restores all, yes, you heard me, all, EP. His horrible quartz setup, for some reason he's built as a physical attacker instead of a caster, makes no difference as his brave order makes your art users unstoppable. Stack him with Emma, Musei, and an evasion tank and you have a killer team. The God Tier. First on the God Tier is possibly the most surprising entry. George. Yes, that George. Is the best tank in the game. He even outperforms evasion tanks, which is crazy. His Brave Order gives both magic absorption and complete immunity. George has amazing stats, including high defense, ADF, and HP, along with the Aegis Master Quartz, which draws enemies' attention and grants complete immunity two times during battle. Pretty much, he can span immunity constantly for himself and the team. Vita is the best caster of the list. She has the highest ATS stat, some decent skills, and a braver that increases damage by 100%, making her a nuclear bomb. The final member of the god tier is Aurelia. She is so cool. Aurelia has the strongest S-Craft, high strength, speed, and evasion. Also, her brave order, Golden Aura, is utterly broken, giving plus 50% critical for 10 turns, plus 80 CP. She also has an amazing quartz setup and the Grail Locket, making her immune to all ailments. There is no contest here. And that's part one. Fighting the final boss with any combination of characters was amazing and capped off the perfect experience I had with this game. Check out part two of this list to see my ranking of class seven. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, 
and I'll see you all later.